you're going to be tempted to skip through this video, and you may be okay with that, but you're probably not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I see even the best math students make algebra operations errors or be unsteady on algebra operations. It tends to happen to people that are in uh, AP Calculus or even Calculus 2. It's just so far removed from what they've done for a while. Other people just aren't as confident with algebra operations as they need to be. This is like, it's beyond a key skill. This is absolutely fundamental to the ACT. I mean, it's just everywhere. You just got to be able to do it. Additionally, the problems they ask, uh, you know, they can be very simple linear equations that you solve, but they can also be like the problem that you'll see in the bottom corner of your screen, which is actually pretty tough. So these difficult rearrangement problems require you to be very comfortable with your operations. Spend a few minutes, take the time to look at it in the book and work those problems because it's really worthwhile. All right. So when we talk about algebra operations, we talk about opposites. Say it equals three. So obviously we want to isolate x, right? So I'm adding four to get this to the other side, to keep things equal. I subtract four from both sides, and that gives me two x equals negative one. I'm multiplying x by two. 2 is being multiplied, so I divide by 2, divide by 2, that cancels, x equals negative 1 half. So fundamentally, you should be very comfortable with that, and if you're not, spend a little time working on it. Now, let's talk about the problem in the corner. For all real numbers, x and y, where x equals 2y over 4, comma, y equals. So this is actually a linear equation. This makes a line, right? Um, they say for all real numbers, because there's not a single solution. There'll be a set of solutions, which if you graph it, makes some kind of a line. This is a rearrangement question, and it's actually not the hardest way they can ask this. They may say, what is y in terms of x, or uh, this is equivalent to. Now, this is a good time to remember that your answer choices are your friends. In a problem like this, you'll see um, usually like y equals y equals y equals y equals, so on and so forth. That can tell you you need to put it in terms of y equals. Now this problem doesn't do that because it kind of specifies in the outset that you're looking for y equals. So use your answer choices on these. They're your friends. You can also work these like Markov problems if you need to. Um, it's not a bad way to go. So let's start working on this. Now, um, oh, I left the negative 8 off here, didn't I? Whoopsie. All right, now I got the right equation. So to be honest with you, the first step is to write down your equation. It's easy to just skip and try to do, you know, everything at once and just kind of use your head. But remember, you want to save mental energy whenever you can. This problem won't take you 60 seconds anyway, most likely. So just be a little diligent on it. Remember, this problem will count as much as any harder problem. So... A lot of times in algebra, what I'm actually going to do is work backwards up the order of operations. So I've got x equals blah, blah, blah. So I've got the y term here. I'm going to go ahead and add this 8. I'm going to get this y term, this 2y over 4, this term by itself. So now I've got x plus 8 equals 2y over 4. You know, one of the, the common mistakes you see, too, is that people think, well, I've got to move this 2y over 4 over here because it's y equals y is on the left side, or excuse me, yeah, y is on the left side of the equation. You don't really need to do that because, you know, as long as it's y equals, it doesn't matter. It's interchangeable, right? We can, we can write it either way, and we'll talk about that again at the end. Now I'm left with this fraction. Now I can do this a couple different ways. Let's talk about the easiest way probably for most of you first. I'm dividing by 4, multiply by 4. Now, remember, whenever you multiply, you have to multiply everything. 
So you don't just multiply the x, you multiply everything. I put it in parentheses here. Now, you can go ahead and distribute that if you like. You would have, well, that's going to be 4x plus 32 is equal to 2y. This is a problem you could wait to the end on as well to distribute. Now I'm going to divide by 2, right? Get rid of this 2, divide by 2. So the 2 is going to go away. And I'm going to have 4x over 2 plus 32 over 2 equals y. And now we can just rewrite it this way as 2x plus 16. So that's how that works. Now, when I said earlier there's a couple ways to do this as far as this 2 fourths, let's talk about this. Fractions tend to give people fits in these, and they shouldn't really do that because it's not that bad. I could rewrite this 2y over 4 as 2 fourths times y. Because remember, I multiply straight across, that would be 2 times y. And then the 4 will be divided by 4. So I don't need to have the y in the numerator. When I'm trying to get rid of a fraction, sure, you can multiply by the denominator and then divide by the numerator, or you can kind of save a step by multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. When I multiply by the reciprocal, I'll get 8 over 8. It'll be 1. It cancels. So I can multiply by 4 over 2, which would reduce to 2. And I'm going to end up in the same place, right? Whether or not you flip the fraction to cancel fractions is, is kind of up to you. I think it's helpful. I think it's a bit of a time saver. But if you can't get yourself comfortable with it, don't worry too much about it. Now, there's a whole bunch of these videos in elementary algebra. I really encourage you to take a look at them. It's a hefty portion of the test. And these are problems even the best of you guys miss.